Hey, I want to do a video on simplifying a span of vectors, and it's very hand in hand with the topic of uh, linear independence of vectors and linear dependence. And uh, let's just hop right into the example. So we're given S is a subset of R3, and it says that S is the span of those three vectors there. And um, this set of vectors is called S, and we want to simplify this um, as much as we can. So just to recap, you know, what is a span? A span is a set of vectors of all possible linear combinations of the vectors in the span. So I have a pretty good in, uh, in detail video that talks about kind of like visualizing this and really understanding this. If you don't understand this already or you're confused on what a span is, please watch that video first. I will link it in the description. So. How would we do this? Well, if we can show that one of the vectors in this span is a linear combination of the other vectors, then it's not really contributing any like kind of new dimension to the span. Again, this is a related concept to the other videos. So very clearly you can uh, piece out from this you know, very easy example that 2, negative 3, and 0 is very clearly a linear combination of 2 times the first vector plus negative 3 times the second vector. Right? This is a pretty pretty clear to see, right? So because of this, we can remove it from the span. So now we have s would be equal to the span of 1 0 0 and 0, 1, 0. This is the same thing as what we started with. Okay? Great. So, what we also want to check here is that these two vectors are now linearly independent. Because if they're not, so actually, just to, to recap, in other words, above, we can say that those three vectors from the, the first span are not linearly independent. And that is because one of the vectors can be written as a linear combination of the other vectors. So that's all it means. It means that these, those three vectors are uh, a linearly dependent set of vectors because 2, negative 3, 0 is written as a linear combination of the other two. So now we want to see if the two vectors we have left are these linearly independent vectors. And to check this, we need to see, well, can one of them be written as a linear combination of the other vectors in the set? Well, since there's only two vectors in the set, the linear combination of the other vector, so let's say that we're checking if 1, 0, 0 is a linear combination of the other vectors. A linear combination of the other vectors is just 0, 1, 0, which actually, so it would just mean a scalar multiple. So in other words, is 1, 0, 0 a scalar multiple of 0, 1, 0? This is very clearly not a scalar multiple of 0, 1, 0. So we can conclude that since these vectors are linearly in, or we can conclude that these vectors are linearly independent since they're non-parallel and they're non-zero vectors. So this would be our final answer for this first question here. Okay, the next question, it says simplify V, which is the span of these three vectors. So the reason that I wanted to start with like an easier example is because we, we kind of understood those fundamentals, right? But what about an example where it's a little bit more difficult to see? You know, you can't, you can't guarantee just by looking at this that, you know, you're going to be able to think of you know, uh, a linear combination of the other vectors. Like, sometimes, what if they're like ugly fractions and it still works out to be a linear combination, you know? So there's got to be like a better procedure to figure this out. So what I'm going to recommend doing is, okay, let's do C1 times 3, 2, 1. Let's do plus C2 times 1, negative 1, 1, and C3 times negative 2, 1, 2. 
right? Because this is the linear combination of uh, those three vectors, right? For any constant c1, c2, and c3, those vectors, whatever this produces, this will be in the span, right? So let's let's check. Let's set this equal to the zero vector, okay? And the reason that I want to set this equal to the zero vector is because there's a neat little thing that we can do to check to see if these vectors are linearly independent. So let's do let's write out our system of equations from the first uh, entry or the first uh, row of the, these vectors in R three. We'll get three c one plus one c two minus two c three equals zero. From the second row, we get two c one minus c2 plus c3 equals 0. And from the last row, we get c1 minus c2 plus 2c3 is equal to 0. So, okay, putting this, let me make a bit of space here, putting this into a matrix, this will be 3, 2, 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1 minus 2, 1, and 2. And when we have a homogeneous system, so all the equations equal 0, we don't need to write all the zeros. A column of zeros won't do anything. We can just kind of implicitly remember that all of these equations equal to 0. So if we are to row reduce this, this is going to row reduce to the identity matrix here. Okay. And what does this mean? Well, this means from the first column, we get c1 equals 0. We get c2 is equal to 0. And then third third row, we get c3 is equal to 0. Right? So we've shown that the, the only solution to this equation right here, the linear combination equals the 0 vector, is when all of the constants are 0. This is sometimes referred to as the trivial solution. Right? Because, of course, 0 plus 0 plus 0 is going to be equal to 0, right? So when we have the trivial solution as the only solution to the homogeneous system, which is what we just found, that means that these three vectors are linearly independent, OK? And, and why, does, why does that make sense, right? This totally makes sense, right? Because if, they, if this was not the case, then we could just move some of the vectors to the other side, isolate for one of the vectors, and then clearly that vector would just be written as a combination of the other two. And I think we'll do an example with that as well. So let me just write out what we just said. Since c1 equals c2 equals c3 equals 0 is the only solution to the homogeneous system, all vectors, they are linearly independent. Since they cannot be written, oops, since they cannot be written, as a linear combination of the other vectors in the set. So finally, let's do this last example here. Simplify this one. And we're going to do the exact same thing as last time, you know? If, this, if it's not really obvious, like alarmingly obvious, what we can do, same exact way, we're going to set up a matrix for a trivial solution, right? And solve for those constants and see, are they all going to be equal to 0 or not? If not, they are not going to be linearly independent. So, shortcut for this: understand how we got, how we set this up, you know, with our constants. But shortcut: just put the vectors as the columns of your matrix. Okay. If we were to row reduce this, we would end up with one zero 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 one zero. 8 thirds minus 4 thirds, 0. So what does this tell us? Reading the solutions, we get C, well, C3 is going to be our uh, parameter or our free variable. 
let's call it T. It's pretty common. We'll get from the first row, we get C1 is equal to negative 8 thirds T. From the second row, we get C2 is equal to 4 thirds T. Okay? And C3 is equal to T. So, we don't care exactly what T is or what the linear combination is exactly. Right now, we are just trying to consider can we write any of these vectors as a linear combination of the other ones. So let's, for simplicity, let's just say T is equal to 1 for now. So this would mean that negative 8 thirds times the vector 1, 2, 2 plus 4 thirds of the vector negative 1, 4, 1 plus 1 times the vector 4, 0, 4 would be equal to the 0 vector. So, oh, oh, and let's, uh, let me scroll down a bit. So rearranging this, right? Why don't I just I'll, I'll isolate for for the, the the third vector since it doesn't have a, a coefficient, uh, or the coefficient is one. Let's just isolate for this one. You know, make it very clear. Four zero four. Well, this would be equal to eight thirds of the first vector minus four thirds of the second vector. Negative one four one. Right? Let's just double check that this makes sense. Yeah, 8 thirds, 4 plus 4 thirds, 12 over 3. Yeah, perfect. This makes sense, right? So we, we just showed here, though, that 4, 0, 4 can be written as a linear combination of the other two vectors, right? So we can remove one of these vectors. Notice that I could have isolated for 1, 2, 2. I could have also isolated for negative 1, 4, 1. Right? So any of these vectors could be written as a linear combination of the other two vectors. So you could remove any one of these vectors from the span. And all of those would be correct. So let's just stick with 4, 0, 4. Okay? So the span is now going to be, let's go 1, 2, 2, and negative 1, 4, 1. And then I'm also just going to be super duper clear here. This is going to be equal as well to, we could, we could have done 1, 2, 2, and 4, 0, 4, right? And then lastly, just, uh, one more, right? And what's this last one? It could be uh, 4, 0, 4, and the vector negative 1, Four, one, right? These will all span the same, uh, the same thing, right? All we're doing is removing one of the vectors that can be written as a linear combination of the other vectors, right? And the key thing to notice here is that we cannot simplify any of these spans further, since these two vectors in all of these different spans. It's very clear that these are non-zero and non-parallel vectors, right? If any of these vectors was a scalar multiple of the other vector in the set, then that would mean that it could be written as a, a linear combination of the other vectors again, and then we could remove it again. So if we had three vectors, we might have to check again to see if we can keep removing vectors. But this would be the final answer for this question.